I'll continue, Stephen. Okay. <laughs> so I guess everybody has tapped on whatever they needed to tap on. Okay. So everybody, welcome to our June meeting. And um, Carol is going to go first because Carol has to go leave us a little bit early today uh, for family business. So I said, well, let's have Carol on first. So Carol, you are hey in the spotlight. Hope everybody's been having a good week and trying to stay crafty. Um, I have a couple of things to share with you today. Um, this is one of the, uh, the projects that I made on a mixed media for Prima. Wow. So That's we've cool. used um, flakes and this uh, really cool canvas that Prima makes. And it, you can tear it, but it only goes in one way. And they've got different little panels coming out. And we used uh, Prima waxes and gilding flakes and stuff. So I'm going to put three little images of my mom up in here so uh, it can go up on the wall then. So I thought, well, if we did the canvas, I also did, and don't mind the 36, it's because pieces that I had left over, I did a card okay. oh, with the nice. pieces, like we can put whatever you want in, but um, they come with the little numbers and stuff. So you could put whatever age that you want on there and uh, black gesso and what have you not. So that was really, really hey, fun to, to Carol, work with. Would yeah. you mind turning it sideways just so I could see the dimension, like uh, turn it so the skinny side, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Thank you. Well, see the so metal flowers the that we used, they were huge oh. and then, but you can take them apart. So you can take all those layers apart. Hmm. So those so are the metal flowers, flowers? So you can make, I'm sorry? They're metal flowers? They're metal flowers, yeah. Same as on here. Oh. So you can see how some of them are really, really big with lots of layers. Yeah. You can actually, when you oh. pick up the petals, you can twist it, and then those metal layers will come apart. Cool. Oh, nice. So, so see here, these are a little bit higher in here. Yeah. So if you didn't want that, you just rip that off. So are these a okay. kit? No, no, this was a workshop that we did. Oh, okay. So, um, but of course, then we get everything in for it, but it's, uh, it was really, really fun because you guys know me in mixed media, not the greatest, but this turned out really proud enough that I would share. <laughs> and then to do it on the card with just all the little pieces that were left over, that was just an added little bonus. Carol? Yeah. Carol. How did you attach the metal to both the card and the canvas? Um, I used the, it's Prima modeling, modeling paste. So it comes in a oh. tube and then you just let it sit to dry. And then you can also use your heat tool to adhere it. Um, I tried Gorilla Glue. It actually fell off. Oh, okay. Because I thought I was going to okay. be smart because I always put too much modeling cream on and then it bubbles. So by using the, I thought, okay, I'm just going to use Gorilla Glue. Yeah, that didn't work at all. Wow. It would not wow. stick together. So um, I guess that lesson learned, right? Trying to take shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really fun. And then I did my first explosion box. Oh, yeah. So, and then these, and there's a, a die for it. Um, not a die, a um, explosion box punch board. Wow. Okay. So that was my first one there. Now you can use that as a card, wow. but it also tells you exactly how to score everything. And you can make little um, doors and pockets and, and they, all that stuff was with it. So there's that. And then this is a little wow. box that it comes out with a, a squash card. Oh, that was a wow. pain to make, but once I figured it out, it was okay. Yeah. So, but that could also work like in your little journals and what have you not too, right? So yeah. that was- Is that, um, is that, that punch was board? Really fun. Who makes the punch board for the explosion box, Carol? It's We Are Memory Keepers. Okay. And we have, um, if anybody likes those, just let me know because they're on pre-order. Um, they're not expected till the end of June. And I think they were around the 22 to $25 mark. But um, the little hearts that you see, that's a template. So you just trace it and then cut it out. But the rest of it, it, it was so easy. I was always scared to make one because I thought it's going to be so hard and I don't like difficult projects, as you guys know. So um, I did quite well with that one, I thought. 
And then of course, you guys know I like pink fresh. So we made these. Oh, so this is a stamp that has just diagonal stripes on it. You can take out every other one or you can take them all out separately. That's on pre-order again too. And then this. So this one's using the stamp, the stencil and the die. And then that one's just the stencil and the die by itself. So two different looks. So that was my creativity um, that I wanted to share with you guys. And I was, as I said, I was super pumped about my mixed media project because I'm not very good at it. <laughs> but now I'm more confident. I've got this now. <laughs> they look good. Thank you. So, okay. So who's next up? Gina, put you in the spotlight. Where are you? There you are. Uh, spotlight. There. Okay, Gina, what you been up to? Uh, hi. Um, different things. I sent a lot of cards, so I don't have all the birthday cards in that I sent, but I was working on ATCs. So the one for June, I guess, was the camping. So I got this. It's a paper with all the wood pieces in it. So I cut out. Oh, no. Wait a minute. This is the July one. Sorry. Anyway, here it is. That's so cute. Oh, cute. Yeah, it's just yeah. I had a big sheet of paper that had all the little camper trailers. So I just punched them out and put them on. But it I use this for this for this. This is for July. I got inspired. So I cut out Hi. all the logs and then I had a die that would cut out the words. So I on each log, all the little words, and then I had a little tiny stamp for July the first for the maple leaf. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nice. that. oh, I like I like your design. That's nice. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, because it you you find it hard to figure out how many. Very striking, actually, quite graphic and yeah, yeah. I need a Good. lot of them because I thought you could almost even put it on a card or something and send it mm -hmm. off. Yeah. Now, and then the other thing I did was, remember I sent all our Christmas cards, I bought this uh, Traffic 45, the one with the steampunk Santa, mm -hmm. and okay. made a lot of cards last year and sent you them all, and I still have lots and lots of pieces left out of the book. So I started to make my, I like streamline cards. So I was still on my Christmas theme because last month I did those blue ones with the deers and everything. And then I made all these. Whoa. Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> oh, it's all oh, like hot cake. Nice. Wow. Those are gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Those little um, eight by eight booklets. Mm -hmm. You can just make all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And you so, put a lot of yeah. glossy, do you put glossy accents over a whole bunch of it? Um, or were they? That's like it. You know what a lot the of it shine. is? It, it, the shine is uh, the little, oh, what we all use, the little sparkles. Wink of Stella? Stickles. 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 Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you take it? Because I know they look shiny, but a lot of it's just a little sheen of yeah. stick here and there. Yeah. Those are gorgeous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really nice. And I still got lots, so I, I can just keep going. So I'll tell you, to invest in one of these. That's good value for that uh, one pad of paper. Well, with one pad of paper, plus I bought the journaling cards. Because okay. some, of, some so. of these are the like these bigger ones are the journaling cards but each, each pad does have in it all kinds of things that you can fussy cut mm, and yeah. they also have um all kinds of little stamps and things mm -hmm. that we could cut out so yeah you could go on and on and on i mean and that plaid can the plaid colors and all that can go on other cards. And this one's a, these pages are really nice too. These. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 
you know, old fashioned, like either yeah. side. There's this side, and then there's this side. Mm-hmm. So I mean, wow. you can that's a really it. nice paper pack, though. Yeah, yeah. I think every year for Graphic Forty Five puts out a nice Christmas one, and I invested in it this year, and I was surprised at how far it went. But other than that, that oh. I'm doing card making, card making. There's so many nice days now. That's why I went ahead and worked on no. the, because I thought once we really get going, the garden and everything, we're not going to want to craft too much. So while I was on a roll, I did both sets <laughs> of ATGs. Okay, that's great. So, um, Darla, I'm going to put you in the spotlight. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm just on my phone, so I don't know how this is going to work <laughs> out. <laughs> it's going. Um, okay. I love the backdrop. Are you at the oh, the, back, the backdrop work. We are in Prince Edward County. Oh, there's the backdrop. Oh. <laughs> ah. Nice. Um, okay. So the last Ooh. time I shared, can you see that okay? This yeah. Um, the last time I did a wreath, um, this was the leftovers. So I painted this and it's an S and then the, um, the flowers all around the outside. So I just finished a second one. Nice. And then we have, we bought this place, um, about four years ago and, um, someone was a real gardener here. So I'm just learning as I go. Um, there are big flower beds, there are five of them. So I've made this um, um, book, it's out of cardboard cutouts. And um, what I've done is made a diary of all of the gardens as they start to bloom. So when each flower blooms, so for example, I had forsythia and then we went on to crocuses. There's a peony bush, then there were uh, creeping flocks, which are out now, and um, then there were um, the irises, hostas, and then just, and I can show you this with the phone, <laughs> these are the peonies. Ah, can, you mean, can out, oh, there, I can get them out that door or not. I guess you can't see them that well, but that's it. No, I hope you <laughs> No, nope, I've got it upside down. <laughs> anyway, there's 16 blooms on that peony right beside me. Wow. Wow. <laughs> um, That's so such a I, good idea too, Darla. And that way, you know, yeah. um, if, if it's anything like my hubby always wants to rip everything out, now you know, don't touch those. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Because I didn't, under, like, for example, there's some peonies and then I'm going to do a journal card underneath it, telling when it nice. comes out and, you know. Uh, so that that's the garden book. Then I uh, was working on the. Did you water buy color. that kit, Darla? Did you buy that base as a kit? Those uh -huh. nicely shaped I, pages. Oh, I, that's in my stash that I've had for about six or seven years. <laughs> and it is. You're right. It is a kit. And it's just. It was all cut right. out like that. But I used one of them as a pattern and cut out more papers. Mm, I would, okay. so I could add to it and then and then also I, I saw the idea in a I'm just grabbing this okay can you see the uh, there's a stand I'm just trying to turn it around here that you can put it in you know one of the the picture frame mm -hmm. then you can just have it sitting there um, like out on a, a table or whatever. And it, it, that's just yeah. one of those stands, you know, that you use for your pictures. Mm. Mm. Oh, okay. I know okay. what you mean. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay then, easel. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. And then I went on to uh, do it, trying some watercolors. So these oh. are just, at, these are at the dollar store. And I've been just like, I've never done watercolors before. So I've been just playing around with them. And like these take 10 minutes to do, right? Yeah. Mucking around with those. And then I tried one in the, uh, more in the greens and, and yellows. Hmm. And you it's just had to paint over, over so the hands. Yes. 
What 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 was in the dollar store? The paper and the paint, or is there a printed image? Uh, there was a printed image on there. Okay, and then you're trying you're watercoloring, shading the the image. Okay. Yes. So it was a it's a yeah. gold okay. image, and all you do is just paint over top of it. It was cool. like done in okay. ten minutes. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. And so then some of the other um, the watercolors. This was watercolor, and then you take a Q-tip and some um, rubbing alcohol, and you just um, drop put the droplets on, and that's what makes those mm -hmm. little round marks on it. So yeah, and you, really, you can do that with uh, salt too, a little salt. bit. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got that salt. Okay, and so I thought this was the one I did with the salt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. And, okay, and then I tried. Um, oh, these were just some, um, just some landscape yeah. kind of thing right. that I tried. And then the cool. last one, the last one was kind of neat because you take for this one, you just take the white crayon. And you um, make a design oh, with the white crayon, yeah, mm -hmm. and then put the watercolor over top of it. So, like I, I was yeah. experimenting. I haven't done my uh, ATC for the watercolor, so that's why I was experimenting to see what kind of a background that so I could Dar get for that. Darla, Darla, have you been um, following a, a, a video or something? Where are you getting your ideas, or are you just playing? Oh. No. <laughs> So this book was the one that I got the watercolors from. Oh. You know, I those Somerset Studio, those books are really good. That that was an older one. I think this is uh 2019 or something. Mm, okay. And and then I've got other um like these kind of books for the watercolors too. Cool. And yeah. Just, yeah, just playing around with you know the kits that you can buy, mm -hmm. and I just had yeah. them sitting around forever. So it was just time to open them and see what I could do. Hmm. So, Darla, you know how you've got all those pixie powders too, right? Yes. If you take some of that powder and just put it into like a little bowl, and then add a pitch of water, you can paint brush that on like a, like watercoloring and water painting, like watercolor painting. And then I'll okay. give you some of that mic because it's got mica in it. It's going to give you a little bit of shimmer if you want it, or splat. You could spl manually splatter it with a paintbrush just to give a little bit of something else, you know. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, okay. I just because I know we talked about it the the last time I saw you, and you had a whole container of a bunch of it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's just another way to use it. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. And uh, then I, wow. I've been, the, the last thing I've been doing is putting like um, more of like making things for, for to put on cards that are more, uh, I guess, three dimensional and putting those wow. kind of kits, mm -hmm. those kits, those kits together. And this, this one was with the, with the, and so that, that's about it. I'm trying to finish up the ATCs wow. and I, I had a question with the ATCs. Are we just doing till June? Is that uh, like, which ones are we sending out or are we doing July? We're sending out to June. Just to mm -hmm. June, okay. Perfect. Okay. All right, so okay. that's and while we're on that question, Carol and Liz, are you guys, um, are you back tracking from January, like are we sending everyone all of January through June or? I think um, Liz and I, I think we're only in for May and June. I don't, we can backtrack okay. and, and do it if you guys want. But I think, I think um, people had asked to just start from, from May for you guys because yeah. people okay. didn't have to make an extra couple. Exactly. You know, so May and fine. June is good for me. Um, I'm sure that's okay. Liz. Liz can speak for herself. She's there somewhere. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I'm really sorry. I have to go. Um, okay. Enjoy the rest of your day. Liz okay. and will keep me up to date, I'm sure. So, but thank you so much. Okay. See you later. Thanks for coming, Carol. Bye, okay. Carol. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
Okay, so next up, uh, Pat, you might as well. You're in the spotlight, hey. I think. Oh, geez, after listening to Darla, I feel like I've been really lazy. <laughs> but um, you're not the only okay, one. So what did I do? After this this month, I actually took two online courses. One was the SAS After course, and um, I was telling Stephen because I went to the Crafts and Chat on Wednesday or whatever you call it. <laughs> I, it was kind of disappointing for me because I think I signed up because, oh, wow, a course and you actually get to be taught by Seth after. The neat thing was I learned about a new product I knew nothing about, which were these uh, Allendine. Is that right, Stephen? Allendine? Yeah. The, uh, uh, they're acrylic. They're just I acrylic think. paints yeah. and glazes and stuff. Yeah, I see. And, uh, but in terms of technique or some aha from after I didn't feel like I got anything from that point of view like we do a lot in this group and I think all of us are not afraid to experiment on our own so therefore I think when people give courses they have to gear it down to maybe someone who's never tried mixed media before never whatever and I just found some of the techniques really basic but the products themselves were kind of neat and um we got them as part of the kit for the course. So I am going to try to do something with them. We just have nothing to show you. And then the second course I took was um, a alcohol ink course that Ecstasy Crafts offered. And it was a lady in Australia. And that was a cool course because I have taken alcohol ink classes before. But the one thing I never learned in any of the other classes was um, like letting your, sometimes letting your layers dry before you uh, put more layers down. And because we're using Yopo, I mean, I'd tried my heat thing before and my paper all went uh, wrinkly. Well, you just, you just need a, a hair dryer with cool setting. So I didn't even have a hair dryer because I don't dry my hair. I just let it dry so I um, actually got myself a hair dryer and uh, I'm trying to do alcohol ink flowers now with a blower there's some really neat stuff online I again I have nothing to show you except to say I took the gloss but hopefully uh, next time we meet I will have something to show you so that was a, a good course and it, it actually didn't cost very much so then I've been just going through my scraps because I keep everything so um and I had to catch up on my ATC so I just have a few the watercolor ones, I don't, they're all going to be different. So I don't know which one you're going to get, but I just grabbed my scraps and started um, cutting them up and uh, finding a, an applicable sentiment. And uh, some of them make really pretty little vignettes, you know, like oh. here's a pen and ink I had tried to do uh, with a background. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other, just some trees. There was a watercolor um, sort of hazy island in the background, but uh, so that's what you'll be getting for your for your um, watercolors. I just don't know who will get what. They're beautiful. Then for the folk, for the folk um, sayings, I just did a cat has nine lives. <laughs> uh, oh, that's that same stamp company you really like with the faces. Uh, this is no, this is a new one. It was called. I saw the image online and I had to have this stamp because I love cats. So it's called Cracker Jack or Cracker Box Stamps. The stamp took two months to come in the mail because it was just the single stamp I ordered from the US and uh, it finally came, but it's a little cat. I just think it's the sweetest little stamp. I, I it. it is. And then for flowers, again, I cut up some of my old jelly paint, alcohol, ink backgrounds, whatever. And I had a calendar that had pretty little um, uh, flowers and I cut them out and just stuck them on the background. So some again, you'll, that was a jelly plate background. This was a stamped background. So you'll just, this was a, a blobby uh, color background, but it worked. So you'll just be getting those. Yeah, and I'm just working on uh, the rest to catch up to uh, to June, but um, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. And let's go to Caroline. And I'll put her in the spotlight. Hello. There she is. Well, 
seems uh, a lot of people are doing similar things. I was doing some, trying to organize, planting some stuff in the garden. So I'm, I've collected stuff together to do a gardening journal, actually, so that I remember where things are. <laughs> um, but uh, I only have, up until now, had one set of ATCs done, and I've actually got two more done. So this is my camping. So I oh, stamp. Wow. I oh, that's that, nice. That's an old Sizzix yeah. die, but like you know, Sizzix has some thin ones that are kind of a lot like the old quick cut ones. So that's the ten. And then you know, I just went crazy stamping trees. Um, <laughs> and then uh, this one, that's actually a photograph of mine that I die cut out. Um, and then I, I, you can probably see, I put some stickles on the centers of the flowers. So, nice. so that was, it was something I had printed that hadn't worked for what I wanted. So then I die cut out of it. You know, it's making use of your scraps, as you say. So I got, um, I've got something out of the background in process, but drying for my family one. And I actually have ideas for the other one. So it sounds like I have gotten a little more creative, juice going again. So that's really nice. Um, I did make a, a, a card for my brother for his 65th birthday and another one for my, actually my sister-in-law turned 65, you know, a little before him. So yeah, so um, I'm happy that I'm actually doing something creative. I, uh, I think that's about it. That's it. Okay, thank you. Um, who's our next victim? Alicia, you're in the spotlight. Well, been pretty busy with the kids, you know, full-time teacher during the week <laughs> from uh, about 9 a.m. till 3. <laughs> wow. um, but I did get my ATC done. It's actually really funny because I thought last Sunday was the end of, was the first weekend in June. So I was like panicking and then uh Dana's like it's okay you have time and I'm like what do you mean it's this yeah. Sunday and she's like no it's not you have another week and I'm like oh goodness <laughs> and Alicia Alicia never stress if you're behind just send them when you're ready yeah so, I, I know, you know what, though? it's you it's funny because when I started in January with you guys it was like the first thing I did when I got off because it's like Sunday my husband's home he's watching the kids I have time for me I was doing yeah. that like in that day so I didn't it was done before the end of the month right but it's okay but this is my camping one. Ooh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. Oh. That's nice. Yeah. Very nice. And uh, so how did you do that? Is that a stamp and watercolor? Yeah uh, so this is so the deer the deer with the branches is a stamp. And yeah. then um, I actually colored in the background with pencil crayon. Mm. And then the sun is actually a die cut from okay. Catherine Cooler. And then the ink um, that you see here and um, leaves in the grass and everything, they're Catherine yeah. Cooler stamps. So I just stamp okay. it on my workspace. And then I use... Um, I spritz it with a little bit of water or whatever. And that's how yeah. I got this texture with the two different yeah. colors, but it's, I let it dry fairly well between. Um, yeah. but because it's water-based, it react, when it gets wet, it reactivates. Yeah. Right. And then, um, yeah. And then I just, again, just, uh, brush painted him with the two different, with two different browns and you just go over it again if you want like more tone or darker or whatever and then yeah. two greens in the throughout the grass yeah nice it's nice and then, um i was busy playing so with some stuff i had it stamped out and some pieces cut so i did this card here Ooh. I don't oh, like butterflies. Pretty. Oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. Don't show you know what, though? It's not a butterfly. <laughs> it's a moss. <laughs> it's a moss. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Pat. I didn't. Oh, look, Pat. It's a moss, though. It's actually a yeah, moss. Right. Are you okay? You don't moss either? Okay. No, no, no. Sorry, no, so I, I said I'm watching on a big screen, so it was like right in my face. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So the, the 
The stamp is from Magnificent Moss with by Gina K. And then the um, the uh, stencil in the background is actually one of Chow Bella's new ones. As the name escapes me, this one here. Ah, it's ready. called Roma. Hmm. Pencil. Yeah. So that's what I did the background with. And then I've gotten um, one of the 24 packs or whatever from Catherine Pooler because I'd gotten, I, I'm a coffee freak. You guys probably always see me drinking my coffee. Um, so she had like a coffee stamp set and stuff. So I wanted to see how far some of the cards, cart, like how many cards I could make out of just two, um, two of the, what is it? Uh, six by six pad. So I did this one here. Don't worry, no more, no more critters. And then this one here, but actually this stamp here from um, a Gina K one. I don't know if you guys nice. can read that. It says uh, perk up, a day can be when friendship touches it first coffee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then this little guy here. And then I put, um, I don't know if you can see, but this is texture. Oh. I don't know if you can see that, but it's actually flock. So, you know, when you used oh. to get like this styrofoam type and it felt kind of funny. So it kind of feels like that. Mm. It's just something oh. a little fun. And this one here. And this is all out of scraps, this one. Wow. I just used a nice. bunch of scrap pieces and kind of layered it. And then I stamped the coffee beans all over. Cool. That's cute. Nice. nice. And then last one. And that's just mm. paint, wow. really. That's cool, too. Cool. And I yeah. Like yeah. Nice. Love yeah. the background. That's an example, <laughs> again, by um, Catherine Pooler called Curvy. Yeah. And that's, signs. that's all I have to share, which I think actually is pretty good. So yeah, too. you've been busy. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. It's like a little bit here and there. I try to set two hours, three days a week aside, but that doesn't always <laughs> happen. <good>. So. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. And let's go to Liz. Liz is in the spotlight. Hello. <laughs> um also been busy with the little one and the nice weather and stuff so I haven't had much time for crafting but um I did pick up a couple of the simple stories like pre-made page kits which I fell in love with so I did up um one for my friend's birthday for her and the littles and then I did this one up for Conrad's um photo album so it came with all the little die cut pieces and then I just had to like punch things out and add pop shots and stuff, but it turned out really nicely. Nice. So we did the beach, um, just the Bowmanville beach, which is awesome. So if you ever want to go, hit me up. Um, also, I've been working on this mini album. So I used the little envelopes to do this. My mom's birthday is coming up. So I thought this would be kind of a cute idea. I saw the idea on Pinterest, but these, is, these are all envelopes. So mm. um, this wow. side of the album, I can tuck like little tags and, and whatnot in added little flip pads. Um, I still have to add my photos and my sentiments and everything but um, I thought this was a really cute idea because you can put like tickets for things you can do um, pictures sayings cards whatever and like every page has like a little tuck in area which is the envelope so I used um, I think it's the Vicky Beaton color study um, yes Yes. Are those plain envelopes or are yes. they all decorated like that or um, the pretty designs? They were in a K one. Um, yeah, these are all the Vicky Booten color study papers that I just tucked on the inside of the envelopes. They're just, uh, I used the oh. Dina K ones in the yellow because that's my mom's color. Okay. And then I just added like a strip in each one to kind of make it colorful. And then the other side I just covered in a sheet of paper, but 
Um, that's basically all I've been up to. I'm sorry I don't have a whole oh. lot to share this time, but uh, yeah, I've been, okay. I've been busy enjoying the nice weather. And, yeah. I like that album. Yeah, that's a really nice album. Yeah. Like that. It was a lot of fun, actually. I got the idea on Pinterest and I thought it was like super easy. Um, it actually really was. All you have to do is just glue the envelope. So each piece of the flap, you just kind of glue to the next envelope. And then you add okay. a cover for the front and the back. And it's easy peasy. You know what's really oh. cool too, Liz? I've made a few envelope albums before is you slit the top part, then you can have an insert that slides oh, in and out opposed to sliding it in like this, right? You slide it in up through the top. Well, that's smart. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's really cool because that's then you can do like a, a cut out, like a little divot and then it just slides out with your thumb or. Yeah, cool. That's a lot of things you could do with the envelope ones. I've wow. made a lot of them in the past uh, myself, but haven't done it in years. So what's old is new again, people. <laughs> well, yeah, like if you've never heard of it, it is new. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Okay, oh. anything else, uh, Liz, that you want to tell us? Oh, thank you for your time. <laughs> okay, well, let's go with Joanne in the spotlight. Um, hi everybody. Uh, hi. Hi. This is my ATC card for June, which is camping. Uh, it says adventure awaits. Okay, oh, nice die. Yes, nice. Yeah. Nice. And otherwise, I've been working on journals. Uh, three of them are already gone. And this wow. is one, this one I'm going to donate to the Cancer Support Center when they open up again. And hey, Joanne? Yes. The, um, with the word that said journal, did you, is that a stamp and different? Because I noticed one of the little fonts, I like the A is different. So is that yes. a stamp and which stamp is it? Oh, it's a stamp, but I don't know the name of it. Um, okay. It's on it's on a big yeah. sheet with different stamps on it, and I got it at one of the garage sales at Class Act. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. I like it, and I like yeah. the paper on the front of that journal. That's pretty. Yeah, I think this what this piece was just some Beautiful. paper. One of our one of uh, our friends, our, a friend of Gina and mine, she gave us a whole bunch of papers she had. So that was from that stack, but it is pretty, isn't oh, it's it? It's beautiful. Yeah. 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 And so I just started a couple more journals. I've got the front and back of the, I call this the jacket. Oh. So uh, this one. Oh, that's that's nice. pretty nice, nice for the summer. And it looks like the, you're using envelopes in that one. Yeah, this is a, a nine by 12 um, envelope, the manila envelope from Dollarama. And um, so at the back, the flap makes a nice pocket to put all your journal cards. And then in the uh, in the front, I'll just put a little pocket here to put some more cards. And how do you put the pages in? Oh, I use um, the, a three-hole pamphlet stitch, and I use a bookbinding thread. Uh, okay. Yeah. So do you just run it through your sewing machine then, or do you manually? Manually, yeah. So I use an all. And I make the three holes mm -hmm. and then I just sew it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What weight of paper are you using inside? Oh, it's just your photocopy paper. So it's mm. oh. uh, about 20 pounds. Mm. Okay. 
Yeah. And then I decorate, I put some washi tape and I do stamping. Yeah, just to decorate Beautiful the pages job. a bit. Yeah. Joanne, Joanne. Yes, yes. Now, that would be a good um, idea. You know how you get beautiful birthday cards and everything? Um, mm -hmm. Using that envelope, you could um, store your cards, like for that year or if it was a special oh, occasion. Idea. Oh, that's a good Didn't idea. You? Yeah. That's a yeah. great idea. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> And that's, um, then I'm going to do a fairy one uh, as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Nice. And um, uh, I'm not a card maker, but I did make a greeting card mm -hmm. to gift to my niece who um, she and her husband just bought their first house. And um, because the, uh, Greeting cards are not essential in Ontario right now. So I had to make my own greeting card. <laughs> and well, uh, the greeting card is an ATC with a fold in it and on a bigger scale. Yeah. <laughs> or a smaller or journal. A journal. Yeah. Or a smaller journal. <laughs> okay. Anything there you else? Go. The Anything else? Pages. Yes. <laughs> Anything um, else, Joanne? Okay. okay, so I guess that's it's, all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I guess it's my turn, so I'll put myself into the spotlight. Um, oops. Okay, there I am. All right, so you can see behind me, I've been busy sewing away. This is on the front door of my house. I'm using it as a virtual background here today. But of course, my, uh, June is Pride Month, so I thought I would make my own banner for the front. And actually, all of those um, rainbow-colored maple leaves, they're all embroidered uh, on my embroidery machine. It took me a little while, but it's all quilted. And I'm kind of happy with it. It turned out pretty nice. Beautiful. And I it also, I'm going to show you my other quilt that took me a while to do. I'm just going to do a screen share here with you, hopefully. Yeah, let's see how this works. Here we go. Share that. And it should be coming up. There you go. Oh, wow. This Great. is, this yeah. is called it's Strong on. and Free. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, there. It's not that complicated a pattern, but for Don't some reason, I cut my pieces wrong, and I had to readjust the measurements. And that one great big huge maple leaf, that's an applique. That's one piece, and it's it measures. I had to cut out a piece of fabric, thirty inches by sixty inches for this, and I cut it out, and I forgot to put. They call it steam -a -seam. It's stuff you put on the back so you can actually uh, fuse it to the background fabric. And um, you're supposed to do that before you cut it out. Guess what I did? I cut it out first. Then I had to try and cut the steam -a -seam. I managed to do it, but that's not the way to do it. But I'm really happy with it, the way it turned out. And I'm playing with this really weird idea. If Canada Day is a really nice day, I have other quilts I've made over the last couple of years that have a Canadian theme. I'm kind of thinking of putting them out on my front lawn somehow, hanging them up. It's going to look like a little mini quilt show, but only if the weather's really nice, of course. If it's raining, well, you don't do that then. But yeah, um, I'm just going to take this off the screen. That's a here lot of I quilting can... on it, Stephen. I'm just looking at all the quilting. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Amazing. yeah, that is really was intense. That took me three days to quilt it alone and yeah. i mean steady eight hours each day i mean uh, the, for the, that. the quilted lines are so close yeah. yeah they are um it's called walking foot quilting it's a special foot that pulls your layers through and basically it's a form of straight line quilting but you space it out and uh, yeah i when i planned it i really didn't think it was going to be that big but it was okay i'm just trying to figure Beautiful. out how to get my screen back uh, okay there should be a thing at the top yep. that says stop screen share yep got it yeah. okay so that and i was also i made this you're going to love this because this would work for quilters or sewers or crafters it's called the in control bag 
Mm. And it's got pockets on the inside and the pockets are designed so that they are open on the bottle bottom. So you could put like a water bottle mm. in here and it would like pull out and hold it in. Mm. It's got a, a removable bottom. This is a piece that has a sleeve on it. So if you spilled something in, you wow. could wash that and put it back onto the hard piece that's there. It's got these little handles on the side. It's got pockets in here Jeez. and on the other side. It's got a pocket wow. on this end. It's got a zippered pocket. Yes, I know how to do, do, do zippers <laughs> in there too. And of course it's got the handles and it's just the right size. Like, oops, it's disappearing in my virtual background. It's just the right size. If you were going to a retreat or something or a crop, Beautiful. you can keep all your stuff in that and around. So Walter really liked it. So I have to make him one now. So I'm just waiting for my supplies to arrive for that. I love and, the fabric, although Pat probably doesn't. Oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah. Well, at least they weren't so like in my face. They're more. Sort no, of they're more collagey. Yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, Sorry well, about that. Um, <laughs> now, the other thing, too, I've been, of course, 3D, hangout, not yours. of course, I've been 3D printing as well. And I was on this kick where I was trying to find, they call them models that you print out of places I've been in the world. So I've got a whole bunch of different ones, but this one is the Sydney Opera House. Oh, oh nice. nice. Gorgeous. It's disappearing here. Pull it in front of myself. Yeah. There. That turned out really cool. Yeah. And, uh, is oh, that yeah. like a, a silvery or a, or a pearlescent <laughs> color? Yeah, it's white, but it has a shimmer to it. Oh, it's um, So yeah, sort of a pearlescence to it, but I thought that turned out really well. Of course, that only took about two days to print, but, and of course I had to have one because, you know, Walter's Dutch and we've been there. So I had to have a little windmill. Uh -oh. so hold it in front of me here. So it doesn't disappear yes. in the virtual. Uh, does it twirl? Uh, no, it does not. But you could, I could have made it after, it was after the fact I glued it in there. You do it in three pieces. You do this piece down here and then this big piece and then that. And uh, I probably could have made it twirl. If I wanted nice. to, I, like I made it. Walter one too in blue. Actually, it's a really <laughs> nice blue because it's got kind of a transparency to it. It's a, mm. a fairly sophisticated um, plastic. And then I've been now I've been on the uh, this kink of making um, art pieces like sculpture because there is a site which is a museum, the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, and the Smithsonian. And both of them have 3D scanned a lot of their artifacts and they're free to download and print them out on your printer. So, wow. you know, they've got a lot of Egyptian people here. This one I made out of wow. gold. And uh, of course you've got your ancient Roman type sculptures. Now this one, I had a little problem with her. She actually did have an arm over here. <laughs> <laughs> but she dro it dropped off while it was printing. So, you know, I figured, well, Roman statues, you, they're always missing a limb. So what the heck? Yeah, yeah it was but, natural. And I made a totem pole. Mm. Cool. Out of gold. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Now I had some problems with him because I this is the fourth version. They get so high and then for some reason they fall over off of my uh, the plate that this is held on. And then I discovered yesterday I had to replace a part on my printer and uh, that was what was causing the, the problem. So, but this one's my favorite to date. I was playing around with the settings in my printer and I got this bust and it turned out, if you saw this in real life, it is so smooth. It looks like marble. Well, actually the filament is called marble, um, but it came out so nice and there's so much detail. Like look at her hair. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I was really thrilled with that. Right now, there's one that's been printing since yesterday. And I don't know how it's going to turn out because right now it looks like a big block because you put things called supports on them for things that hang out in space. Like, for example, uh -uh. these would need supports coming up and you pull the supports off afterwards. And uh, uh -huh. pulling off supports is not fun, uh, I have found. But this one I'm making now is one giant block <laughs> so i may be pulling wow. supports off it for a while when it gets done so yeah i've been having fun with that and the other thing i i noted today is um who was it that had the the glampers on their atcs somebody had you know campers but they call them glampers it's Carolina. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, Gina, Gina, yeah, Gina. Yeah, Gina, Gina did. Yeah. Well, actually, did you know that is very on trend, as they say right now? They call them glampers, those little half moon kind or half sphere, whatever, you know, the old 50s style looking campers and that kind of thing. But there is, I can, and I haven't downloaded yet because I don't know if I will or not, but I might. I can do that in a freestanding uh, applique on my embroidery machine. They've got uh, the place I go to for these different designs. They've got some there, which I don't know. It'd be kind of cute. But I'm working on another big project right now called mm -hmm. a Rose of Sharon Quilt. And it's all applique mm -hmm. and it's all done in the hoop in my uh, machine. It'll take a while to, to do it. I just started it. But I love doing machine embroidery. So it's fun. But, so when you say Rosa Sharon, Stephen, is it going to be the actual Rosa Sharon bush on it? No, it's okay. flowers. Uh, they're actually stylized kind of flowers. They're not real. They sort of look realistic, but sort of not. And they call the whole thing Rose of Sharon. Um, I don't know why, but I guess because the flowers on it that whoever designed it sort of look like the flowers that come out on a Rose of Sharon, but they're, right. they're very stylized with leaves coming out and done like mm -hmm. in wreath type designs and things like that. And mm -hmm. each block's a little different and there's 18 blocks in this. Mm -hmm. So that's why I mean, it's going to take some time. To do it. Yeah, well, that's what I was wondering because, like, they have beautiful flowers, and I love the smell of them. But they have, you know, like the book, the way that the bush and the leaves are. I wasn't sure if you're, it's just the flowers that you're doing, or if it's like a combination of the both. So that sounds yeah, interesting. It's, it's a combination of leaves and flowers, but like I said, they're kind of stylized uh, yeah. the way they're done it. So it'll look like an old-fashioned quilt when it's done mm -hmm. like uh my grandmother i have several of my grandmother's quilts and she did hand applique on them and that's what they're mm -hmm. imitating here but it's all done by machine um okay. it there's a process involved which yeah someday i'll do a video on the process <laughs> but you can find them on youtube too so when you don't do it by hand do you find that you lose some of the detail no because no? Oh, I, I don't know because I don't do it, but I was just wondering because... No, because what... Well, your stitches are going to be perfect, okay? If the right. machine is doing it, whereas you do it by hand, you're going to have, you know, your stitches aren't all going to be exactly the same mm -hmm. length. I mean, with an experienced sewer, a really good hand sewer, they would be very close. Like my grandmother's, when you look at her stuff, I can't mm -hmm. believe it. It almost mm -hmm. looks like it was done by a machine, but it wasn't because mm -hmm. she made these back in the 60s, the 70s kind of a thing. Um, but they have designed them so that it has a handmade look to them. So to somebody who knows nothing about machine embroidery, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. they could look at these and go, oh, that must be hand done. But they're not. Right. But I suppose it's cheating. But <laughs> if I tried to do it by hand, it would be covered in blood. Because <laughs> if you say it was and it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Best to leave it as a mystery, I think, for those who are not initiated. Uh -huh. Oh, you did that all by hand? Uh-huh. Yeah, I did. Yeah, really. Uh, and, and go in with bandages on your fingers just to prove it. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, so that's what I've been up to. And I'm just going to get here and put us into gallery view because now we have a decision to make okay if i can get rid of this thing off my screen so i can look at my notes okay here we go okay so our last year we did meet during the summer july and august do we want to this year do we want a break do we want to take a month or both months july and august off come back in september what do you guys think we're still in shutdown, so <laughs> lockdown. I, I would love to still meet. I mean, it's only an hour or so, but yeah. I'm fine either way. Okay. All right, put it this I way. I won't be available those two weekends, so I won't be around. Yep, well, that's fine, because I mean, I guess why I'm yeah. asking, because, you know, I figure, well, maybe people are, you know, going to their cottage or whatever and don't have a connection or, or whatever. But besides... Um, uh, Caroline, um, or was it Pat? Caroline. Caroline, yeah. I, I'm looking at everybody's picture, trying to figure out who talked. Talk. Um, 
everybody else, then we'll just go ahead as we usually do. So we'll go the first Sunday in July, the first Sunday in August, and carry on. I'll That's okay. But I go July. What I you broke up, Liz? What was that you just said? I'll be away in August camping but i'm good for july or whatever you guys want to do yeah. okay well that's fine all right so we'll just we'll leave it open to that our next meeting then would be july the 4th um our usual time and we'll just carry on with who's ever here yep pat i just wanted to um say uh, maybe to save yourself some work do we need the notes um i don't know that, I, that was my next question do you yeah. want uh, notes I, I don't need the notes because I'll just, if I miss it, I'll go back and watch. But I, I mean, I'm capable to take my own notes if I want to take note of something like a stamp name, but it might yep. save you some work because I, I actually appreciate that we're meeting, but I don't want it to become a grudge and just do stuff when no one's really taking the use of it maybe or something so yeah. i don't know how well, the others feel about this. i mean if if you if you feel that, that you don't really need the notes or i mean it won't hurt my feelings if i'm not doing the notes it doesn't matter um yeah, the only reason i do the notes anyways it's sort of like minutes from the right. the meeting because i file them into my book since i've done that since oh, day okay. one of when we met as a group uh that's why i have them there so actually I'm just going to say, I'm just going to carry on with the notes and because okay. you, you do with them what you like. Okay. What yeah, no, I was just trying to save you some work if it's too much. It's not, it's not that difficult. I know difficult. you've tons of these. Okay. Yeah, that's, it's okay. not tons. I will be honest. The one thing that pisses me off, okay, is that, well, that should be a private discussion. So I'm going to come back to that in a minute. But um, does anybody want to add anything else to today's uh, meeting before I turn off the recording? I just have a question. Um, yep. We have ATC topics till September. Did we decide um, when we'd be picking more or when Joanne would be coming up with wonderful ideas again? <laughs> <laughs> or someone else. Or someone else. Yes. Just... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yes, we have, we have until September. Uh, so any suggestions for October? Well, what about something I like Fright Night Halloween. for October? Oh, uh, I didn't hear what you said. What about something like Fright Night for October? Okay, Fright Night. Everybody good with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And November? Uh, we've Do we done want to think about topics and talk about it next time if nobody yeah. has something right now? Okay, that would be good. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. so next time. Okay. Thank you. I'll put a note in my minute saying uh, next meeting come with ideas for... Uh, We've got September's, right? So it'll be November, yes. October. How far do we want to go? October, November, October December? Now. Just to the end of the year? Or? Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll make that note in there as well. Um, okay, anything else before I turn off the recording that anybody wants to bring up in general? No, we're good. Okay, so I'm going to end the recording and...